Do you find yourself with a spider web of power cords? Is it difficult finding the cord that you need? Are you tired of detangling? If so, don't spend upwards of $10 on cable clips from the internet. 3D print a custom one yourself with the help of Project Anonymous walking you through the process. Hey peeps, welcome back to Project Anonymous and in today's video, we're going to design and 3D print our own custom cord clips and fix this tangled mess. So stick around to see how we do it. Okay, so we're in Fusion 360, so to make our cable um, clip, we're going to make a 3D object and then extrude some holes into it. We're going to start with a center point rectangle, just use our origin as that center point. And I think we decided we wanted to make it 20 millimeters by 110 millimeters. And then we're going to go ahead and extrude this out, E for extrude. I think we're gonna make it, what was it, 20 millimeters big. And now we have our basic block. And now we're gonna go ahead and sketch on this face the holes that we need to hold the cords. Just zoom in here a little bit. We want to make the cord hole about four and a half millimeters. And then we can use this cool feature here, rectangular pattern. And we can use this rectangle and take out as many as we need. We want it to hold five cords, right? Mm -hmm. And then we'll evenly space them. And then all we'll have to do is dimension Then we want to make kind of an opening here so we can probably clip the cord in. But first, let's dimension this out like this about six millimeters. Well, maybe eight. I think I like that look better. That way, we can kind of round the top a little bit more. two and a half millimeters apart and then that will kind of make a little groove that is wide enough for the cord to come through because we're going to use flexible material here when printing and then it will stay in there but we can easily get it out if we wanted to so I just need to recreate this so to copy it and move it over I just need to figure out how much distance is from the center of these points I need to mention that. And it looks like it's 21.25. Okay. So now I can just take this, hit Command to select multiple, and then Command C to copy, Command V to paste, and now I can just move it over 21.25. And now it's exactly in the same spot. And I can do it again. Forty-two point five plus twenty-one point two five. Might as well let program calculate for us. And then one more time, Command V. And just like that, we're gonna have our areas to be able to cut out. The only thing else I have to do is kind of make a shape out of this and combine it. All right, so we want to make the edge round. So we're gonna use our spline tool here. Like we want. 
that good? Mm -hmm. And then we're going to mirror it. So we'll pick our mirror tool, select our object, and then our mirror line. And our mirror line is going to be our origin line, which we can't see right now, so we have to hide the body real quick. And then find our little mirror line here. Hit OK. Now if we look at our sketch, it went to the other side as well. That's cool. Yep. So now we'll bring our body back. And what we're going to do is we're just going to select all of the areas that we just made by hitting the command key. And we're going to extrude all of these out. selected. Now we're going to hit E for extrude. And instead of going in the positive direction to add material, we're going to go in this way to cut it all out. Easy as that. That looks really nice. Yep. So that should hold all our stuff. And now we just are going to round some of the edges because that kind of looks pretty sharp in places. And we can do it multiple different ways. We could just do a fillet on all of our hard edges here, which I think would be easiest, but I don't want to round this bottom edge here. Um, what we could also do is just select on a side and then create a profile and then cut it out just like we just did. We'll probably go this route. I'm just going to flip this around so we don't get lost. And I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to just make half of it and then mirror it to the other side so it stays perfect. Let me escape out of this. If I hit P for profile, I can actually, pro or project, I can uh, project this line here so that I can use it when I select my spline here, I can go right there and it will project on there. Hit OK. And now I can use the arms again make the shape that I want. And now you can see I have this area because I projected the line. I can command this, extrude, and in this case, again I'm going to go and cut material away. Pretty neat. Yep. I think we selected these lines here. And then fill it with those and get a little softer edge. Well, I'm still, I'm looking at this right now and I'm thinking maybe this is a little too thick. I don't think it needs to be that thick. What do you think? I'm thinking we can actually reduce this. Extruding out. Yeah, that looks good. That looks a little bit better to me. What do you think? Yeah. It will use less filament too. Absolutely. And it will print quicker. So I kind of like that. All right, so this will be what we use with command strips. So we're going to go ahead and export this as an STL now. We're going to hit make. We're going to deselect this send up 3D print utility. And that way we'll save as an STL for us. Click on the body, click OK. Save. OK. Now, I think we should make a version with screw holes in it so that we could actually secure it with screws in case we didn't want to use command strips. What do you think? This is a nice alternative, so if you want it permanently there, you can have it permanently. Exactly. It will never fall off. Yep. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually go from this face and make a new sketch. So we're going to go back into the solid tab, make a new sketch, click on our face, and we're going to make a new circle. Give it an eight millimeter opening. And then we're gonna do another circle. 
the same point. Four millimeters. Dimension this here to here. Let's go ahead and just mirror it. That circle and that circle, mirror line, bingo. Okay, so now I have this small hole which is gonna go all the way through. So I'm gonna command click both of those, extrude, and I want those to go all the way through. And you can see now they go all the way through. Bring back my sketch, and now I'm gonna click on this one, this one, and I'm gonna hit extrude. This time, I'm not gonna have it start at the profile plane because that would be the wrong side. I want the big hole to be on the top. So I'm gonna say start from object, and then I'm gonna click on the top here. And you can see now it's gonna work its way down. And I want this to go down quite a bit, right up to there. Okay, and now you can see I've got a nice pocket for my screw head to go through. So we don't, you know, cut ourselves on it or anything. And looks good. So now we'll go ahead and export this. Tools make okay so we're in our slicer ultimaker kira so we're going to print both of our sdls at the same time this being our um command strip one and then our screw one and we also need to change the temperature because we want to print these in cpu Right, so we've got both of our files loaded here. And they're just gonna print on the bed like that. And in order to change uh, our materials, we're just gonna click on this, change it from PLA and to generic TPU. And what this does, it will save our kind of setting defaults for what type of material is printing so that our temperature will be basically be already set. So we're gonna Discard that because that's we don't need that. It also kind of changes the color of the design, so just to let you keep track of what kind of material you're printing in. So now we got that, and then you'll see now our material temperatures will have changed to the nominal temperatures. And you can see it looks like it's printing at 228 degrees Celsius. Um, the TPU material that we have has a range of print, which is around 220 to 240. So 228 is right in the, the Goldilocks range, and we'll leave that there. And for build plate temperature, the default is set to zero for TPU, and we can go ahead and keep that. Uh, we are printing on gl a glass bed, uh, so we're gonna put some glue down, I think. Um, or maybe not, maybe we'll try it without glue and see if we can get it to stick without any adhesion, that way we'll have a nice slick bottom to put our command strips on. So we'll go ahead and try that. If that doesn't work, we'll go ahead and put glue down and see if that works. If that doesn't work, then we'll go ahead and update this and print it with uh, some build plate temperature. So let's go through some of the settings here. Infill doesn't need to be filled in a whole lot. 20% is perfectly fine because we want this to remain flexible, right? And for adhesion, we'll just leave a skirt on, which is just it lays down a couple layers around just to make sure you have the bed level. Looks good, let's slice it. Preview. All right, that should be perfect. Save to file. And we always like to change this to what type of material we're printing. TPU. Print.
Okay, so it finished printing. Yep, turned out really nice. Definitely. Good results. Now we'll go ahead and put the command strips on this side. So I'm really happy with this 3D printed cable clip result. I think it turns out really nice. Yes, and we use TPU, which is a flexible material, which I think is gonna be key in how this performs. So it's a lot nicer getting cables in mm -hmm. and out uh, rather than if we use PLA or, or something harder. So it's a good thing we use TPU. Yeah. So if you really like this cable clip design, but you're not sure if you wanna do all the process to design it, you can go get ours off of Thingiverse. We'll have the link in the description to our Thingiverse page. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it if you liked it. Like it. Subscribe if you enjoy our content. Subscribe. And turn on the notifications so you get reminded every single time we post a video. Stay crafty. And be happy. Bye.